Ladies and gentlemen, fuck y'all, we about to get it in. Oh, what I say baby. is life. This is the realest shit right here. <laughs> All natural. It's crazy. Thanks, Daniel Rollins. I went from the streets to the creeks. That's a true story, though. Welcome to the Darnell Rawlings Show. First of all, I'd like to thank, or thank God for bringing old friends and new friends together. I've met a lot of new people tonight that I've never met before. I've seen them, and I'm very thankful. And for Donna, our years of friendship, and Donnell, our new friendship. But also, we want to thank the Lord for bringing us all together, for keeping us healthy, for the love that this community has. Makes me want to cry. <laughs> for accepting and, and our new member of our community, and for the love that he is bringing to our community. And Thank Lord for all the blessings that he's given us, for this food that he gave us tonight, and for all the many blessings that he blesses us with. And I pray, Lord, that everybody gets home safe tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 One more thing, can I add to that? Yes. <laughs> um, um, who did you play for? Who did you pray for to win the pickleball game? Oh. <laughs> Team Don. Hello, that's right. It's been over four months. I've been on what you call a hiatus, trying to get my life together, trying to get nature in my life. And people have said, Donnell, what happened to the Donnell Rawlins podcast? Well, you know, if you hear this music, the Donnell Rawlins podcast is back. But we're doing something different this time. We're taking from the streets to the creeks, and we're here to talk about something that's buzzing all across. Y'all like when I do that voice? Something that's buzzing across the country. It's a phenom called Pickleball, and this is the Donnell Rawlins Show live from YS. I know you want to say OH, and to that I say OH, what do you say? We're live here on Black Lives Matter Boulevard, and we're here to get to the bottom of one of the most competitive sports events in the history of sports. Some people say, Donnell, that has to be the thrill in the Manila. Some people say that would have to be Bobby, whatever his name was, versus Billie Jean King. Some people would say that that was maybe uh, Tyson Fleury. What's his name? Fleury or Fury? What is it? Fury. All right. What, I'm, what we're not going to do is I have 30 people behind this camera, and nobody want to help me out when I ask a question. <laughs> now I hear laughter, so I know it's motherfuckers back there. Some people say, Donna, the biggest sports events in my life was Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas. But the biggest sports event <laughs> We're going to ignore these ghosts. I've been told that there are ghosts in this house. But one of the biggest sports events to hit Yellow Springs has been the pickleball match Donnell versus Donna, some, okay, that sound like a Donna, that sound like a Donna clap. That sound, some people this would say, some people, you're late. You're late. You're late. That is in my shot. It should be in your shot, but it's late. Anyway, I got, we got, the, you bought this trophy from Dollar, Dollar General. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I do want to apologize for not having my podcast for the last four or five months. And people say, what happened to your podcast? The world happened to the podcast. Things got opened up. I was very aggressive, and I was very, very 
punks were on when I delivered my podcast and everything during the pandemic. One reason because I had nothing else to do. And once the world opened back up, I was like, okay, now it's time for me to go get the money that I missed for the all of 2020 and possibly 20, um, and possibly 2021. But I've been seeing a lot of podcasts. I've been seeing a lot of people say, say it to me, Donnell, your podcast was dope. When are you going to bring it back? I didn't know when I was going to bring it back until now. You notice that this set is totally different from anything that I've ever done because, you see, the representation of the stained glass will give you the impression that we're in church, and we are in church. And people didn't know we were going to be in church today. God knew. Um, <laughs> all right, you can laugh. If I have to put my hand up for laughter, I'll do it. All right, let's do it. But you know what? Nobody knew about church, but guess who knew? God knew. All right, and um, since then, a lot of things have happened in my life. I will say that um, uh, thanks to Dave Chappelle, I fell in love with the community of Yellow Springs maybe three years ago. For so many years, I had been coming here and having the experience of like, okay, I'm chilling in Yellow Springs, but never the experience of like, there's nothing else to do. You're really going to get connected to this community. Pandemic means you can't go anywhere. And I fell in love with Yellow Springs for the same reasons that Dave Chappelle fell in love with with Yellow Springs. And, and I'm going to tell you, as a comic growing up in New York, that was the place that most of my career was, and seeing Dave Chappelle there, and I remember when he made the transition from New York to Yellow Springs, everybody laughed at him. Everybody was like, ah, oh, what the hell are you doing in the country, bro? You should be in New York. You should be in L.A. And I was one of those people who was like, why are you here? And it, didn't, it wasn't until I started spending time here, and I realized... Dave Chappelle is here for his peace, for his sanity, and for community. And that's one of the things that I fell in love about being in Yellow Springs. The sense of, like, it takes a village to raise a kid. The sense of, like, I'll help you if you help me. The sense of we're all equal. Now, I haven't been here long enough to realize that that could be all bullshit. <laughs> but for what I saw, the community has always been inviting. And for about a year, I said, Dave, you know what? I'm thinking about buying a crib here. He was like, if you do it, okay, let me do my Dave here. If you do it, you got to lean into it. He was like, you got to commit to it. He was like, if you're going to be here, how much time do you think you're going to spend here? And I told him I could do 50 to 70% of my time. And we talked about it. And for some time, I would get listings. And I'd be like, oh, that's a nice crib in Yellow Springs. I was like, should I move on it? I don't know. And I talked about it a lot. And my heart was telling me I wanted to be there, but my mind was like, wait a minute, can you handle that? And then one day, Heather, who's a good friend of mine, if you know what that means, um, <laughs> that means, <laughs> figure it out. Um, <laughs> there's a phrase called, I'll put two and two together. All right, we can all count two and two plus four. That's what it is. And I would get these listings. And one popped up one time, she, she had picked me up, and I said, let's just go past that place and check it out. And we walked past, there was nobody out here, it said it was a for sale sign out there, and we both uh, broke the law. She, I would have probably got arrested before her. Because <laughs> we both jumped the fence, but I know if the police came, they would have said, the black guy jumped the fence. <laughs> we jumped the fence, and we walked through here, and we walked to the, to, 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 to the end of this property, and I was like, oh shit, I think I want to buy this place. She was like, wow, I was like, I could just see my son here. First thing I saw, before even going inside the house, the first thing I saw was the adventure that my son would have. My brain was like, oh, my son would climb that tree. He would dive in this pool. He would do all that. So my connection was with that, right? So I was like, okay, do you want to move forward? So I said, the next day, we'll, we roll past again. Then the owner of a house, who is a very interesting person, I'll let you decide what that means. <laughs> Some people have different things to say about him. I say he is the equivalent of the most interesting man in the world. And it's one thing to meet a person first for the first time. But to meet a person for the first time with a gun on their waist, you'd be like, oh, shit, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and he was proud of this property, and he had no problem with giving me a tour of it. And I was like this. And I looked at him, and he, he looking at he don't know me from anything. He looked at a black guy with some jeans on, a hoodie, and some Tims. And I said to him, I said, I'm going to buy this house. And he looked at me like, oh. Right, He looked at me in his clever way, and I'll leave that up to your interpretation of what that means. 
He said, put an offer in. And I was like, okay. Uh, I put an offer in. And then he also said, I, one of the things that attracted me was a swimming pool, right? And <laughs> this is what I'm learning about being a homeowner. You have to do inspections. <laughs> you have to check everything. The worst thing to do is take the word of the homeowner. Because I, it was like, oh, my God. It's a heated pool. Now, mind you, there was a pool cover over it, right? So I didn't look at it. I was just so happy. I'm a black guy, like, about to buy a house. I'm like, oh, shit, it's a pool. I don't even need to look. He's like, it's heated. It's, uh, it's, it has a filtration system. He's telling me all this stuff. I didn't even look, right? And I should have spent, I should have. And I was like, okay, I'm getting the house. Long story short, put the offer in, and I, I bought this crib. And after I bought it, I started finding out when you have to really double check shit. Because what I thought was a glorious swimming pool was a swamp. And if somebody said, how do you know it's a swamp? I'm like, well, you can be in your bedroom, open the window, and you hear frogs for eight hours. It's a fucking swamp. You know, but I'm from the city, so I hear any signs of nature. I'm like, oh my God, did you hear the noise of the swamp? Like, I am so new to nature. Like, I'm in love with deers. <laughs> I had no idea that the Ohio community look at deers as pigeons and rats from New York. <laughs> I could literally, I could literally uh, shoot a deer family of 12 <laughs> in the front yard. Like, uh, assass like, 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 pop, 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 in a line. And it would, nobody would ever hear about it. <laughs> but I found out, let me kill one tree, and I'm on the Yellow Springs front page. <laughs> I have all the women talk about, you fucking tree killer! <laughs> and I'm like, you're a, you're, a, you're a tree lover. So where do we meet in the middle? So I was excited that I was going to be a part of this community. And one thing that you know about being a part of the community the only way you really feel good if you're accepted by your neighbors and you have a relationship with your neighbors. So me, and being a homeowner, I didn't know, like, when you become white people neighbors, they give you shit. <laughs> and they don't stop giving you shit. Like, where you get spoiled. Like, black neighbors like this, oh yeah, you live across the street. White neighbors would be like this, like, I'm telling y'all, this is a true story. Like, when I first moved here, uh, every morning, my doorbell would ring, bing bong. And I'm a street dude. When your doorbell ring in the hood, you don't answer it. <laughs> first he said, who the fuck is at the door? Did you invite anybody? You don't immediately run to the door. So there was a little time gap from when I first got alerted with a doorbell to I finally go to the door. And then when I went to the door, I looked really quick and there was nobody there. And it was always something in a picnic basket. <laughs> Apple pies, cherry pies, casseroles, coffee mugs, very inviting shit. And then whenever I looked down, I would, did, I would look for a second, I look around, then I look to my right and it was always, and I'm not being racist, a white woman with lemon lulu pants and Birkenstock <laughs> shoes running away, talking about, hi, neighbor. <laughs> so I got spoiled, right? I got spoiled with that. So I got so spoiled that anytime I saw a white woman, I expected her to be bearing gifts. <laughs> like, my white woman is different. Like. White woman, give me my pie. <laughs> and everybody's been so warming and inviting to me, right? And then I'm like this, I really love this neighborhood. And then one day, another white woman, dressed like all the other white women, walked past, and I was like this, um, introduced herself to me, and at first, I think, this is what I said was, you don't have a pie. Where's your pie? I can't talk to you unless you have a gift for me. To which, and I may stand corrected, the response was, do you play pickleball? <laughs> I'm talking pies, they went to pickleball. I was like, I don't know what the hell is pickleball. And before I could say what it was, before not even knowing what my skill set was, 
not even knowing if I'm all American in anything, looked me up and down. This is a woman that this neighborhood respects. Looked at me up and down and said, I will beat your ass <laughs> in pickleball. And I was like, what is pickleball? And they tried to explain it. It's the, one of the uh, uh, fastest growing sports in America, but they kept going back to the fact that they would beat my ass in pickleball, to which I was like, I'm ready. Not knowing anything about pickleball, and I started talking trash, and I was like, maybe you got yourself in something that you can't get yourself out of. And I met a woman that, for some reason, this community loves. <laughs> and she started bullying me and threatening me for this pickleball game. Now, mind you, anybody that's watching this show or listening to a show right now understands that pickleball is a big deal right now. But I think that... I and her conversation with me was ahead of the curve. Now everybody's looking at me like, you was trying to tell us something. And that person, you, you hear people say friendly neighbors. I don't know what type of neighbor to call this. Somebody said, just call it that woman. Oh. That woman, my neighbor, who introduced me, Donna Severt, help, thank you uh -huh. for coming. No, thank you Ooh. for wanting to be here to explain to people how when we had a competitive uh, pickleball match mm -hmm. to raise money for charity, how you were so nervous that I was going to destroy you in front of all your friends that you've known for over 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to start with nice trophy you gave me there. Ah! But all also, right. you don't know the part about when you moved in here. Put it closer to your mouth. No disrespect. I'm not used okay. to this, oh, guy. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's okay. Go ahead. It's taken me to another planet. Go ahead. Okay. That's what she said. That is what I say. I'm sticking by that. Okay. So, when you first moved in here, a group of those Lululemon neighbors said to me, you know, we got to tell this guy, this is a quiet neighborhood. <laughs> Don't you think we ought to tell them? Right. And I was like, hell no. So I stood up for you right from the start. Okay, now let me say, oh, that's what y'all be talking about behind my back? Yeah, baby. Okay, let me tell you this. That's where those and I, okay, came from. And guess what? I knew that y'all think I was going to be loud, so it was my business to find out all the rules, who sleeps at what time, and everything. Because I was like this, I don't want to break the rules. If they said, because Linda, your girlfriend... Explain yeah, to I'm me that she goes to sleep at 9 o'clock. I was like, let me tell you, so I'm going to add to your story. So I was like this, Linda goes to bed at 9 o'clock. I want to have everything shut down at 8.30, there right? You go. I'm respecting the neighborhood. You're good. And I'm burning stuff in the backyard because black people like to burn shit sometimes. <laughs> I'm just burning shit like black lives still matter, right? I'm burning shit. They didn't know if I was doing a protest or whatever, right? So a couple of neighbors said they knew I was burning stuff. They was like, yeah, um. We're having a party for my mom or whoever, right? Their 80th, 80th birthday party, right? I wasn't invited. I wasn't I invited know, anyway. We'll talk about no. them later. Okay. But so I was it. like this. They was like, I was, they was like, oh, we got a party for the 80-year-old woman, her birthday, Donnell. Could you stop burning stuff? <laughs> right? I was like, okay, I, I respect that. I won't burn stuff, right? They was like, because we're going to have a little party for an 80-year-old, right? Cut to this goddamn party. Went to 2 30 in the morning. Whose party was that? They was turning up. Those ADO people that hated on me was turning up. And I was like, what's going on? It sounded like some bad karaoke singers, right? <laughs> then when I found out later, they were doing karaoke at 3 o'clock. So as much as they disturbed me, Donna, yeah. I couldn't sleep. So you need to talk to your neighbors. Well, you seem to have recuperated from that. I have. That's fine. To the point where. We had this. Let me explain this. Okay. You bullied me. You bullied me. Everybody looks at you like, Wait, oh, she's so. Everyone in this town knows I'm sweet. <laughs> Elaine checked with me. Uh, no names. Scary. We're not using names. Is, okay, Elaine, are, what? Are you really okay with him being your neighbor? And yeah, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. okay so far. Go ahead. And she's like, really? Is he okay? Yeah, so far it's good. It's been good. That's what, but good. you didn't give me the benefit of the doubt. 
You profiled me as the dude that's going to turn up, not beat you in pickleball. You profiled me. You profiled me. And I was like this, why do I get along with everybody else? And the woman that comes with no apple pie is giving me the, the hardest time. So I thought it was going to be competitive, right? This is what I found out. I didn't know anything about pickleball. Then I started hearing this. You do know um, that she's a professional athlete. A professional, yeah. That's what they told. That's what the street said. They said, they was like, you do know that she played tennis in college. Oh, yeah. Well. I didn't know any of that. Uh-huh. There's a whole story to that. And this is what I want to get to. I know this is, we're going to get to pickleball. We're going to get to, like, yeah. this. And you, you, you explained something to me. Because when everybody told me, they said, you play pickleball in college. I was like, damn. Pickleball in college? No, no, it's tennis. They say, you play tennis in college. And all I said to myself was like, oh, she's going to beat the hell out of me. And she's been playing that long. And we talked about that. And you told me, and this is very interesting, and what I thought was very interesting, that you did play uh, tennis in college, but you didn't play tennis in college out of high school. What was your situation, and how did you get in tennis? To how did you start <laughs> playing tennis in college? Okay. Well, here's where we get to the part where I am old. Right? I like to That's say what seasoned. To get to. No, you listen. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, this is serious. It was a good story for me. I um, went to Antioch. Yes, Vanessa, can I say? And, um, and I had kids and a business and divorce. And I got a phone call saying, hey. I mean, I had a master's degree by then. Right? OK, show off. OK, yeah. educated. <laughs> I see with so, your little masters. Why are you looking at my face like that's the difference? I'm a good athlete and I'm educated. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I'm white. Shut up and dribble. Yeah. But anyway, okay. go ahead. So, okay. So and then I so I got a phone call. You know, the phone was on the wall with the thing. Hello. And I she, wasn't saying oh. You just said, said oh. Sit down and hear me out before you say no. And I was like, okay. Who said that? Well, I didn't know at the time. And she said, I coach Sinclair Community College Tennis. I want you to come play for us. We, and just know that we go to nationals every year. And I said, do you know how old I am? I'm 44. And she said, that's great. OK. So I was like, OK. So I went to college. But she said, yeah, Title IX. So I said Title IX to Donnell. He didn't know what that was. And uh, you know what? Don't act like. I was excited about it, but I knew it was going to be an interesting story. So I said, "You and no, you, 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 you were very insulting to me." Insulting? Yes. You said time. You said you said this is what you said. You said mm -hmm. you don't know what Title Nine is. And I said, "I want you to explain it on the podcast. What is Title Nine? Well, it's kind of like when you said, "Where's my pie?" Same kind of thing. I, 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 I explain how that I'm going to bake a pie instead of playing tennis or pickleball. So, okay. Title did title now title, title 9. Title 9. Title 9. Uh, when I went to high school, girls didn't play sports. I was a majorette and I was good. Okay. Okay. We were New York Can State. you stop pointing so aggressively at me? <laughs> no, but go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay. go ahead. Is this good? Is this good? It's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was a majorette because that's what we, you could do, you know? Girls couldn't play sports. So, yeah. So, uh, I nothing against majorettes. We were This good. is what I need to know. Okay, what? What did Title IX give you the opportunity to do that didn't, that couldn't be done? For me personally? Yeah. Title IX said that any female who didn't have the opportunity to play college sports could have four years of eligibility. At any time in their life. Can you believe that? No, I'm saying that's a I good... I couldn't believe it either. I was like, what are you saying to me? I have a business and I have three kids and I, what? And she said, yeah, we go to nationals every year. And I said, I can't do it. So uh, she said, well, you know, call me back if you change. Can I ask you a really quick question? Yeah, sure. What was, who inspired, uh, Title IX sounds, sounds like some type of legislation, right? Yeah. What was Actually, it, and who was behind it? legislation, and Rita might know the more truth. That We're not talking about Rita. That came out of your Nobody talk about Rita. Of First of all, don't say nobody named that I didn't introduce. It came out of your Don't say nobody, no, no, uh, don't uh, talk about Rita. Uh, don't talk about Rita. 
I won't even mention Rita is a little corny pool player in Yellow Springs. I'm not even that, gonna that walk around with her little punk ass pool stick and get people, she pay people to cheer for her. So don't talk about Rita. Let's talk about us. Okay, just one thing I wanna add that she whooped your ass oh. in the pool <laughs> the night before I whooped your ass in pickleball. Oh. Rita. Did you talk to the producers? We were not supposed to talk about this till we get it. Right. Okay, go back. Title Nine legislation. We're go. We're dropping it. All now right, good. Everyone knows Rita. We're dropping it. Rita, Rita, Rita. Oh, lovely Rita. <laughs> okay. Okay. So where were we? Title Nine. Okay. What was the legislation? Title Nine legislation came out of a case that came out of Yellow Springs, Ohio. What was the case? It was very cool about girls not having the right to participate in sports in high school. Really? Yeah. The Who? One of the leading cases came out of Yellow Springs. So, and I became, you know, it really changed my life. Were you like thing. like a poster child for that? Like, <laughs> No, no, no. I, yeah, stop laughing so, at me, a poster woman, no disrespect. <laughs> no, what I'm saying, it seems like with Title IX, you no, would have a group of women behind you talking about, yeah, girl, we can do it. Was it that type of energy? Was it like you did something that nobody else did before and no, you were no, going to be no, a trendsetter? no. no. No, I'm not going to say I was one of the leaders, but this coach out of Sinclair Community College, Linda O'Keefe, who passed away, she was amazing, amazing athlete. She was the coach. She couldn't recruit young girls to play, okay, because she just couldn't recruit them. So she started recruiting some Title IX old ladies, older. We, you know, we were 40. If that, I call it Golden Girls. That girl. seems pretty young right now. Doesn't that seem young, 40? Come on, Danielle. For me, oh yeah, that's yeah. like that's that like me. So. I'm also old. That's okay. like me robbing a cradle. <laughs> what? Oh. All right. Anyway, let's but go back to a mature time, conversation. And I'll tell you a really true story because I went to play for Sinclair, and had the time of my life. Okay, so there were a few of us, and we would get in the van, drive down to these D1 Division One schools, and whoop their asses. And one time we get out of the van and this young 18-year-old, she's going to college, you know, and she said to me, wow, you got a lot of coaches on your team. And I was like, honey. <laughs> we're <playing. laughs> we okay. are the team. You know, and then, uh, you know, she just, yeah. So we would do quite well. Do you feel like, I know yeah. you were excited about competing, uh -huh. but, um, but did, did you, do you feel like, you were like a, a pioneer or you was doing something for the rights of women? Did you feel like, or when you hey, play? I'm old, but I am, was not a pioneer. Come on, Danielle. No, I'm not saying, okay, maybe okay. I'm using the wrong words. Yeah. But f for you to have to pass some legislation for those people to even to participate, that means that that didn't exist. Well, Do you think you was in the foref on the forefront no, of that? No, I was a beneficiary, early, early beneficiary. Right. Yep, and it was awesome. So, so and now look at look what girls do. It's great. Don't nobody want to care. Nobody care what girls do. Yeah, everybody. Does. Nobody want to care with that. No, I'm telling you, I, I I'm joking. But when you okay. told me that, it was a very interesting story because, like, I assumed that you were playing college uh, tennis, mm -hmm. like like right out of high school. But when you told me that story, it it made me feel good because I know that nowadays, that like women are making so many strides to be equal, to be empowered. And that's what I know in my generation, maybe one behind me, but f to know that that was going on then and you was right there taking advantage of a situation that would empower you, which goes to my next thing. As much as I wanted to beat the hell out of you in pickleball, yeah. and I campaigned for people to be on my team, and I'm thinking like, Donnell, your celebrity status would get anybody to support you. But as I started going through the community of Yellow Springs, I said to myself, Donnell, you might have bit off a little bit more than you can chew. <laughs> because everywhere I went, and it was so funny, and you might not be excited about it that you played in college at the age you played, but every time I talked to him, I said, yeah, I'm playing this lady. I'm playing this lady in pickleball. I'm going to beat the shit out of her. And I was like, yeah, beat her ass. And then I, that, then I say, they say, who are you playing? I said, Donna. They be like, you know she played in college. <laughs> you know she's an athlete. You know she's a competitor. And what I found out was how much respect you had in the community 
of Yellow Springs, Ohio, the same community that um, I fell in love with. And they always had to remind me of how long you've been here. Because <laughs> after you um, cheated and beat me <laughs> in pickleball, I quickly said um, uh, that I want to protest. You too. Uh, you played on illegal nets. The net was too high. It was a technicality, but I just need to get back into it. We could talk about that. Okay. What I did was yeah. I went through my community. Uh -huh. It's not just yours. It's our community. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right? And I went door to door and I knocked on doors. <laughs> and I was like, could you sign this petition? <laughs> they said, like, what's the petition for? I was like, Donna, stop the cheat. <laughs> right? And I'm telling you, these are people that I consider to be my neighbors. And every door I knocked on, they were nice to me. <laughs> They said, Donnell, listen, <laughs> really appreciate you being a neighbor. I love you being a neighbor. And he said, you know what? You're not a bad pickleball player. But I've been knowing Donna for 40 years. There you go. And they told me, that, that, that this was one person said, get that goddamn petition on my face. There you go. You got a better luck of getting it signed at Beaver Creek than Yellow Springs. <laughs> That's what that, but it, as competitive I thought our game was, and people said, Donnell, do you, um, you care about losing the game? And I said, I, can't, I don't care about losing the game because there's no way for me to lose. And the reason why I said that. I thought I saw you lose. You saw. Oh. You, physically, I lost. <laughs> My mind didn't lose. <laughs> All right, so what you saw, uh, 12 to 2 or whatever, okay, okay, you got your little point. But the community won. Yes, I agree. The people won. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, y'all don't, don't understand. She kept on saying, well, Donnell, this is in my lane. It you're is. sharp, but you're on your toes, and you're the funny guy. But as, I'm telling you, as much as I try to destroy you on social media, your comebacks were, like, epic. <laughs> Like, I have some Donna favorite comebacks, right? <laughs> one of them was, um, I had posted, a, this is one of them, there's so many of them. One of them, I posted a picture of my uncle and my son on Instagram, <laughs> and she posted a fire emoji, right? And then I said, she said a fire emoji, I said, what you need to be doing is practicing. <laughs> and she responded, <laughs> I swear, I fell out of the bed. She said, practice? We talking about practice? <laughs> and if anybody, if you know, you know. That's the Allen Iverson uh, quote that went viral years ago. She said, practice? We talking. <laughs> and I knew she knew what she was talking about because she spelled about, bout. <laughs> B-O-U-T, bout. I was like, oh, she won again. There was another time, and I was like, this was a classic. I was like, yeah, you need to work on your <laughs> backhand serve. So she gets, she hires her content providers, directors, lighting. Uh -huh. yeah. She hired the whole community, <laughs> and she had a pickleball paddle right here, right where she had a pickleball right here. And I don't know what it is. She had a glass of wine, and somebody said, "Are you guys about to shoot a porn or what?" <laughs> because she always she said, "Donnell," <laughs> and then she said, "You're right. I do need to work on my backhand." And she took a pickleball paddle. And she did like this, and then it was like eight gold medals. I was like, you might be in trouble. But that game was very, com you're not going to agree with this. I thought it to be, <coughs> okay. What? what? Okay, how do you think the game went? When you went to sleep that night. I didn't go to sleep last that night. I was still celebrating. The, it was your, great. The, your, um, the wedding. No, the day the before. The night before. What'd you think? You was nervous, right? Oh, I You looked at these legs. You was like this. <laughs> oh, man. You was like, I'm going to have trouble. Y'all see the calf muscles. <laughs> I know you looked at me up and down like, oh, man, that young buck. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I swear to God, I don't even think people on this block know who I am. They was like, Idris Elba just moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> okay, that was for my ego. Ooh, so many Donna fans over there. Go ahead. What was going through your mind? What was going through your mind the night? Before. The night before. Yeah. I was at a wedding. I wasn't not thinking about you. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Go ahead. What were you saying? <laughs> Go ahead. Continue. What were you saying? <laughs> you weren't thinking about me, but you were. You were or you weren't? Well, listen. I knew you'd been out taking lessons, getting yourself all ready for this pickleball thing. Mm. And, uh, you know, I figured... I figured you'd be doing the Bobby Riggs thing and getting in my head, right. and I would have trouble with that because I like nice focus. I'm serious when I play. I play serious. So and so that's I thought. Oh, I gotta stay focused. I'm, I'm gonna be ready. And then you know the next morning, my son and daughter-in-law were in town, and they said, "Oh my God, Mom, you can't believe it! Last night, Donnell." <laughs> He got whooped on the pool table. Okay, all and right. No, no, what? 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 Oh my God, that's so disrespectful. What? That's so disrespectful. Oh, uh, they hired some Mexicans to hold up your name. They hired some Mexicans to hold up your name. But okay, I'm going back. Oh, this is so corny. And they're shaking. All right, okay. <laughs> No, this is so funny because I remember when we were deciding where we were going to play, you, 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 you made all the rules. You said, I want to play outdoors because the chance of me getting an injury indoors is greater than outdoors, right? And then you also told me, you said, I got a wedding. You tried not to do it. You was like, why do we got to do it on Sunday? I'm going to a wedding. Most of the people are going to be hungover. So I, kept, I felt bad about that, right? To the point was I did see your son that night, right? And I got lit. I was like this, oh, I can get lit because I'm pretty sure Donna is going to be lit. And she had so much energy. I woke up, and then she had people saying, Donna, Donna. <laughs> and another story, this is why I say I think you're so funny, because we said, I said we need a, a, prelim, a preliminary match, right? So I'm like this, I'm going to get a team. She was like, I'm going to get team Donna, and you get team Donnell. And then I said, okay, what type of team are you going to put together? She said, a couple of seniors, but you got to take it easy on them. Right? I didn't say that. No, this, that's what you said. You oh, tricked wait, me. Wait, wait, you wait. said that. You said, a couple of seniors, but take it easy on them. So now I got to redo my, my team. I'm like, I can't just have these people beating up on these old people. Oh. I need some people that don't have a certain skill set. I go to the tennis match the next day. They said, Donna got you. I said, how? She said... <laughs> She introduced her team like this. Hey, I'm Donna. This is Team Donna, a couple of seniors from high school. <laughs> <laughs> they beat the shit out of my preliminary team. <laughs> and then you went to play me. But I'm going to tell you, yeah. one of the things that I got out of it, as much as we went back and forth, first off, it's um, I felt like we were bringing awareness to what is considered to be one of the hottest sports out. So what was your introduction into pickleball. How did you find out that pickleball was something you want to do for someone coming from tennis to play pickleball? Because there is tennis and pickleball beef. What, what was your introduction? My introduction? Okay, just stop for one second. <laughs> I know it's Heather. <laughs> Can we tell them to be quiet? Ooh. Ooh. Production voice. Ooh. So. Okay. All right. The world is excited about pickleball right now. Whenever I say pickleball, people say, what the hell is pickleball? What was your first introduction going from a, 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 a talented tennis player a talent. to pickleball? Well, first, we'll get this straight. I'm just a tennis player. I'm not great. I love it. Right. It's my, I got a tennis family, and we play, and we play hard, and we compete, and I love it. So it was a long time ago. A woman at tennis said, I'm going to teach you guys pickleball. And after we play tennis, she would make us go out there and try to hit this pickleball. And and that was it. You fell in. That was it. She taught us how to play, and I liked it a lot. So pickleball actually started like in the 70s, I think, out in the Pacific Northwest. And, you know, right when I learned how to play, uh, it's got to be 15 years ago. It was pretty new to this, really new to this area, right? And uh, and 
since then, especially in the last five years, it's everywhere in this area. All yeah. the tennis clubs have pickleball lines. Uh, Danelle got another set of pickleball lines done for us at Antioch. There's a great group in town playing. It's blowing up. It's blowing up all over the world. As soon as there are 75 countries where they're playing, it's going to be an Olympic sport. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's huge. It started out being older, retired people who couldn't play tennis anymore, couldn't move that much, smaller court. And now it's a power game. It's intense. You got young, you, you got athletes. It, it's encompassing everyone. But what I love about it is the trash talk. It's great. <sighs> I mean, it is. It's great. It's up close. You're close to each other. No, it's called disrespectful because oh, you yeah. are so disrespectful. <laughs> when you won, when you won your trophy, I wake up seven o'clock in the morning. I look outside and she's walking down the street with the trophy like this. Yeah, what about that? Figure your face. You've been. Everybody thinks I'm the best trash talker. You've been murdering me on the pickleball, but I. I I, 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 I really do like that part of it. I was like this, man, you're going to destroy this lady. And I was like this once, every time, I'm so nervous when I look at my DM, when I say, when it says Donna Mitchell in the story, I'm like this, oh God, what did she do now? To the point you were showing off, you hired actors. Hired. Yes. You, yeah. We thought it was your grandson and you stole a kid <laughs> to do your commercial. You stole two kids. Mm -hmm. You feel good about yourself? Mm -hmm. The person that everybody loves, Donna, she's so... I do and it's, feel you, good. you stole kids <laughs> and forced them to do neg a negative campaign toward me. How do you feel about that? Great. <laughs> it's been the time of my life. But I will say this, Donna. As yeah. I got to know you, and we had conversations, and these conversations, are away, they, were, they were away from sports and stuff, and I realized how invested you were in the community to go back. People don't... I don't know if people understand this Yellowstone community of where it was, where it is now, and where it's, and where it's going. And you said okay. something to me, and I, I talked about um, a guy that was uh, this community knew, a guy named Gabby. Oh. And I knew him as a guy that gave his heart, his soul, and his food to everybody. And I connected to that because I like to cook. I like to entertain. Part of the reason why I'm doing this now is so people can get together. Hmm. Right, and you. T I was talking about Gabby, and you told me this when I said she gangster. You said I got locked up with Gabby. <laughs> you said that I did. Cause you said I hurt. got. No, did you say I was in the joint? We did time. No, I didn't exactly say, say it the that joint. Way. The you was said, the joint. Did you know Gabby? And I was like, Yeah, we got arrested together. I mean, you get to know someone pretty well when you get arrested with them. Yeah. I think the next question is, because white people don't get arrested a lot. Was it like a protest arrest? What type of arrest it was? Well, so, pro well, what can I say? Gabby, he's just an amazing guy. So, um, so I was a teacher. I taught handicapped kids. That's, you know, in Dayton. And teachers went on strike, and I needed income. I answered an ad in the paper, so there was a job at the lodge, and I took the job, right? So it was great. So I was serving alcohol, and Gabby was cooking barbecue, and it was out, you know where it is? I don't. It's out on South River Road. It's now a metro park, beautiful place on the river. It was amazing. It was the greatest. It was a club. It was called the Knights of Nowhere Club. You had to have a membership. It died. Maybe it cost a dollar. I don't know. And people could come and hang out, families, fishing, kids, food, Gabby's cooking. And uh, I'd bring my dogs out there because I would have to close up at night. The dogs would follow Gabby around because he smelled so good like barbecue all the like time. Like me. That's what they say about me. And, <laughs> and I would say, I Let say, me get a sexy laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> I never heard anyone say you smell so good, but yeah. uh, it's all right. But but I nobody said, would ever say that. <laughs> Go ahead. Gabby, 
I'm really sorry. And he said, well, they're only human, aren't they? You know, he just, he was amazing. I think people here knew Gabby. Gabby was great. So, and then uh, the teacher strike ended. I was going to go back to work as a teacher, except that I came home from the meeting that ended the strike, and there was a note on my door, and it said, hide, because there's a warrant for your arrest. And I was you like, You was on a run? I was like, what? <laughs> what? So, actually, a woman that I taught with, her husband was a judge. So I called him. I said, so what should I do? And he said, hide. Gabby told you to hide? No, this judge the, told oh me to God. hide. Oh, God. Because he said, don't get arrested on a Sunday because you can't post bail. Right. So. Most so, people know that. Don't get arrested on a Friday or Saturday. You're you going to be go. at least 48 hours. Good. So that's something I never would have known had I not known Gabby. But, uh, yeah, so I hid. And on Monday, we got arrested. So there was, me. I think, five of us. And actually, so they wanted Gabby and they wanted George. They wanted the two. Yo, men first of off, you've been a snitch right now, Donna. What's that? Because we knew Gabby. You just threw George in there. That's like snitching. Oh, George. Well, yeah. I mean, if anyone. Is he alive? I don't think so. Okay, then you can talk about him. Good. Okay. So they wanted them. They didn't care about the three white women, really. And I honestly, I didn't know that much about all this stuff of of racism so ugly until then but boy i learned it really fast because that's who they wanted and they wanted to use me as a vehicle to get to them and that's all they wanted and they knew they could use my teacher license they kept threatening to take it away if i didn't turn them and it was ugly but yeah. i yeah. You going through those experiences back then, mm -hmm. do you feel like from then to now that there's been a change in regard to race and how in the perception in the perception people have of other people in this community? In this well, see, and that wasn't Yellow Springs, that was Miami yeah. Township. Okay. Okay, so that was a turn of Yellow Springs versus Miami Township, which is more the outlying area. Do I think there's been a big change? I don't, I'm afraid not. No? What do you think? This is, I don't know what my contribution can be to this community, but I think the, 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 my contribution thus far is that I talked to this guy that's a, a strategist on brands and the brand, brand. What is your brand? And I was like, yo, I, I want to do something. I want to be the river ninja. I want to be so-and-so. It was like, but you have to be the bridge between something. He was like, Donnell, if that's what you want to be, you have to be the bridge between something. And I was going through my brain like, what's your bridge? And I know from me being here for three years, and I always have to go to say, my real connection with Yellow Spring has been how one of my dearest friends, Dave Chappelle, his connection. And that um, that just, it just, it goes through me. Like anything that I plan on doing here in Yellow Springs, I want to do, it's all because it was motivated and um inspired by him. Then I said, Donnell, what is your bridge? And I, what I say is, I'm from the streets from the creeks. And I said, you know what? Maybe that's your bridge, the streets from the creeks. And then I realized, after we did our charity event, um, I looked at everybody who was out there, old, young, and everything. I said, well, maybe my bridge could be the old with the young. Because not too many uh, situations in life now where everybody goes out as a family, enjoy each other as one. It's always like, well, we don't want to hang with you, mommy. You're not cool enough. It was always a separation. But even though we talked a lot of trash, you said that was the biggest thing about the talking trash, that I felt good knowing that when I looked out there, it was everybody having a good time, and nobody was judging anybody. It wasn't like you was like, look at that black guy. Look at that white woman. It was just like we was all out um, to have a good time. And if nothing else, I think that that's what we – did and the crazy thing about it, this is why I'm connected with pickleball. I don't know how to say this, but I think pickleball brings everybody together. We had an opportunity to start do this event, and it was like, okay, it was gonna be fun. So what can we do next? We'll do a charity. We'll donate money to a charity. Are the people that we raise money for here right now? Anybody? I know this is crazy to say. No, yeah. nobody. Yeah. Who's Somebody here? Is. Who's here? The winners. 
365, okay. yes. All right, come in. All right. There's an organization. We got a mic for you, too. We got a mic. Let's do 365. Okay, 365. All right. So we did it. We, we, what was that? Okay, okay. All right, can you hear? Do a mic check. Tech, testing, testing. I feel like I'm about to play some Marvin Gaye looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> you like the sexy librarian, bro. Hello. <laughs> yeah, he look at he's ready for this too. He looks like this is a quiet store to tune into. <laughs> so when we were talking about doing this, we was like, okay, what charity, local charity do you want to donate to? And I was like, I don't know of any local charities other than um, I had a carpet that was too big for any room that I wanted here. And my good friend, you know what I mean, um, Heather said, there's this daycare center that I'm pretty sure they would love if you gave them this carpet. I'm like, who the hell is going to trip off of a carpet? Cut to, take the carpet there. They're super excited about it. And I was like, oh, my God, man, I like the fact that it's a job that some people don't appreciate all the time. Because some people are like this, okay, you just dump your kids off. You don't have no connection, and we handle the kids. But I was like this, if a, if a carpet could get them excited. What if I did something else to continue to get them excited? So I told Donna, I said, that's what I want to um, donate to. And then she, was, she said, are you, do you know what 365 is? And I, I felt something or saw some images from Dave Chappelle's documentary. And then she told me about you, right? So in Yellow Springs, what is the nonprofit organization 365? The 365 Project was started. Man, that don't even sound like you. About <laughs> 12 years ago. And uh, by a multiracial group of folks in Yellow Springs. And they were interested in really initially focusing on the opportunity gap in the schools. The difference between education achievement for students of color and for white students. Which exists regardless of income. And so they were interested in addressing that. They, as they began putting together programs, they came up with a mission that will focus on celebrating black culture. That's what I'm talking about. With the aim of... Whatever, Kanye, <laughs> black lives still matter. Okay, yeah. go ahead. With the aim of achieving racial equity in Yellow Springs 365 days a year. Right. And so that's where 365 comes Boy, y'all got a tough plan because three, uh, 365. Yeah. That mean white people don't get no weekends off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it's if that's a good day. You should have called that 262, <laughs> bro. 365 is a hard number. Yes. And you represent from, you're from the uh, Yellow Springs Community Center, right? Yes, I'm from YSCCC. We are a very small nonprofit, and we've been in the community almost 100 years, actually. Second mm -hmm. child care center in Ohio, so I thought that was pretty cool. But we survive off of support from the community. So, yeah, that rug was huge. I mean, you saw the kids, the parents, the staff. Like, people were coming to my classroom to see this rug. Really? So, I, yeah. It's, it's they came deal. to see the rug, but they didn't come to see me play Donna in pickleball. Uh, some of them did. You should have we got some there. of the rug people. We were there. <laughs> so, um, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much because... Without the support from the community, we can't provide for those kids. And, you know, we're trying to set them up for success. So we really appreciate you. So this is what happened. So when we first did this, we said, okay, we want to pay, take everybody's donation. Whoever wins, they that's the charity that's going to go to. Vanessa. Vanessa works at Antioch. And um, is that one or two? Oh, let me see. So what we did, Donna, give that to Donna. So Donna, team one, this Antioch, right? Yeah. Um, I need a pen. Donna team. You're signing the check. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is the time where everybody appreciates. Yeah, Donnell, uh, put your money where your mouth is. Now, this wasn't a lot of money, but the fact that this was the money that the community did, this was, so we did this like in two weeks, right? We had this, and we and we did it like we had courtside seats. Courtside seats weren't super expensive. And Donna, team one. So we do have a check for 365. 
And all right, put that punk trophy down. We we have a we we have a oh my god, stop it! We have we 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 had a chuck check for 365, right? And I was like, okay, 365 won. But this night, this day was so beautiful. And I really believe we can look at life and like it could be losers, but in certain situations, it's a win-win. And everybody wins. And I know the kids came out, and I know you were excited about it. And I said, we can't just be like, oh, we didn't win. So what I did was match the money that Donna helped raise for 365 and gave an equal amount to the Child <laughs> Care Center so um, everybody could win. And I was like this. I said to myself, you know what, Donnell? You know, uh, the, 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 the contributions, they were... Okay, somebody told me, Donnell, but for Yellow Springs, that could go a long way. I said, but what's going to go longer is that you inspire people, um, you uh, bring attention to something, and then we can continue that. So I'm telling you, Donnell, you talked a lot of trash. <laughs> I talked a lot of trash, but I really feel that you are my connection with this community, I think you're my connection with the history of this community. And um, we did something I think was very special. We got people involved. And we're just going to keep going forward. And I'm going to tell you, the one of the things that I've found throughout this, and I'm telling you, they love Donna in this neighborhood. They, they love Donna in this neighborhood. Everywhere I go, people like this, you let Donna kick your ass in pickleball. I was like, Donna cheated. I said, and w once we go back to the city council and they realize that my argument is legit, I needed 19 signatures for my petition, which I got. Okay, half of them are family members, but we got them. <laughs> and we're not talking about the machete behind the other 19. What, signatures. my machete? Yeah. Okay, uh, but go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, no, go ahead. Go what's ahead, go ahead. What, what, okay, what's your, you can't just, what's, what's your machete what, story? You can't hold a machete in one hand and a petition in the other. Yes, because I was trying to cut off the negative energy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I put pressure, but we are, this is what we're going to do. This is my first time back, and they said, Donna, what do you want to talk about? I was like, the closest thing to me right now, that is uh, uh, this community that I am, and the community that I'm in, and, 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 and pickleball. So with that said, we will have a rematch. My terms. Got it. 365, expect a lot more money. OK, yeah. They'll get we, well, a, a lot uh, under my terms. I'm pushing for the rematch to be in California. Yeah, you choking up now. <laughs> you choking up. I'm pushing for it to be in California. Uh -huh. I don't know if this is such a thing. I'm just going crazy. On a clay court. On a clay court. <laughs> a clay court. The temperature has to be 70 degrees. Keep going. Right? But I want to rematch. Okay. I want to rematch. Uh-huh. So, in closing. Wait a minute. Rita. You got Rita is not here. Rita, you're going to be out there for billiards. And nobody, four. nobody wants to Come talk on. about Rita. What we want to talk about, first I want to say thank you for allowing me into your community. Thank you for embracing right. me. Thank you for uh, 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 communicating with me, dealing with my antics. But more importantly, thank you for being that bridge oh. between old school the new school and, and creating something dope in Yellow Springs. Damn, he's getting soft now. I gotta say. Okay, that's gonna be the show, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I'm trying to be emotional. Okay. What? What? Okay. I'm All just, right. I Good. just, I gotta say. This man's pretty amazing. True. A lot of, <laughs> 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 all right, that's it then. No. But honestly, I mean, you're you're a pain in the ass. But I, why you act like you wasn't going to say that? Everybody know you said when I met you, said I'm going to kick your ass. Then I'm a pain, yeah, in, the pain in the ass. How many asses is it, Donna? <laughs> but you, I I had no well, whatever. You you're pretty amazing, and you've done a lot of great things for our community already. 
Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And I also want to say that, like, this is when I started my podcast again, I was like, I want sponsors. Everybody like this, okay, I can get you sponsored. But I was like, I don't want to talk about anything that I don't care about. But there's a good friend of mine named Paul that started this, especially during the pandemic. He helped, he kept, uh, he helped us stay hydrated. He helped us with our vitamin stuff. And I don't know if you know, it's a new, new, new thing. It's called um, IV drips, where you get your vitamins, your minerals, your hydration through a through a um, IV drip. And the company that I'm so loyal to, whenever I come here, I'm like this, oh, I need to get a drip. It's Wellness Flow. If you see it in the back, we're going to put it on the screen. But I, I want to say, if you're in the uh, Dayton area, and if you're in the Yellow Springs area, make sure. And Columbus. And Columbus. If you're in Del Dayton, Yellow Spring, Columbus area, and you want to recharge yourself, recharge your life, definitely make sure you go to Wellness Flow. I'll just say I'd be at home in bed already if I hadn't had my drip. So. No. <laughs> no, you would have been home in bed if you didn't have an opportunity to talk trash to me. That's true. And I was nervous about, nervous about, Heather wanted me to remind you it's an underscore. First off, I don't like people that got underscores to this shit. It's too hard, but I respect that. Wellness underscore flow. If you're in Yellow Springs, Columbus, or Dayton, make sure you pull up on them and they will charge your life. This is the Down and Rawlins show. Um, I've been on hiatus for four months. I think we're going to get in the groove. This is something we did for the first time. What I wanted to do was celebrate my new community, celebrate Yellow Springs, and unfortunately, I like to say, celebrate Donna's victory. Thank you. Until next time, as I always say, a joke could be too soon, but it never could be too soon for funny observation. Goodbye. What?